Hi, I'm Mitch Peacock and today I'm going to show you how you can take ribbon or chainsaw and lumber and turn it into wood ready to use in your projects. By both splitting and using a chainsaw I broke down a couple of short cedar logs and I've been converting that lumber into some pieces ready to make what's hopefully going to be a jointed chest. There's still plenty more to do and I'm just going to be using basic hand tools and I'll show you how I do it. Now a lot of the material that I arrived from the log is not straight and that's because the grain isn't straight. There's a lot of material that I've got to remove from the middle of this piece to get it nice and flat. Now I could do that all with a scrub plane but it makes sense to start it off with a hatchet. If you're going to do this at the bench protect the top of the bench by using something like a, a bench hook or just a chopping board clamped onto the top of the bench top. Now to remove this lump out of the middle I'll take some chops into the wood an angle like so. This wood's been hanging around for a few months and it's too dry to make hewing that easy. And then clean them off. So that's getting much better and now I'll go over to the scrub plane to finish off the flattening. Now any scrub plane will do, I'm using my homemade one, it's got a very highly cambered blade and it takes coarse shavings like so. The scrub plane isn't leaving a brilliantly smooth surface but at the same time it's not tearing out an awful lot of material as I cut across the grain. That's because it's curved. Checking regularly with straight edge. This is, happens to be one of my winding sticks. Ease the iron back on the scrub plane a little bit. You can then start going more with the grain. Most of the planing left to right was working well. But on this little area here, right to left was what was needed. Now we've brought it down into what is pretty much flat. And we'll just go onto a bench plane. And I'm going to be using a four plane just to smooth this surface off. Now I'm going to check for wind. I know I can't be that far out. So I've positioned one winding stick at one end, one at the near end, and then I just lower myself down and check when the ends of the rear stick disappear. And you can see that's almost out of wind, just a little bit high on this rear edge or this front left edge. 
I've covered the fine flattening of bores in other videos, but basically we're using stop shavings to take material away from the high spots and then through shavings just to bring everything nice and smooth again. And by judiciously using the stop shavings and then the through shavings, we can bring everything nicely out of wind. Now what I'm going to do is just square up one of the sides to that face. It's almost square down at the end there. Obviously very rough, but almost square. And it's a little bit high over this side. So we just use a scrub plane to take down the high spots and to get rid of all the roughness. Quick check. So a little bit high over that side. A little bit here. And because that's almost flat on the top, I'll take my four plane. It's almost there. Just a little adjustment. That's virtually spot on. So now we've got a nice flat side, a square and flat edge. And what we need to do now is think about thicknessing it. I might actually get two components out of this eventually. Uh, but I'm going to just square it all round first of all and see what I've got. So I'll take a pencil gauge. This one is one that I've made just from an ordinary marking gauge. You see it's got a pin down at this end. I've just drilled through for a pencil and tapped in for a little screw to, in the end to hold the pencil in tight. So what I'm going to do is maximise the material I've got. So set the stock on the squared edge find roughly the thickest bit I can get out of it, set the gauge there, mark that along, mark it around the other sides, and you can see here there's quite a bit of material that needs to be removed, so I'll go to the saw and do that. Again, it's something you could start with a hatchet and then go straight onto the scrub plane. But I think in this case, because of the amount, I'll rip through it with a saw and then flatten it with the plane. A little bit out with my sawing here, so I'll start with the scrub plane. Just to quickly take that piece away. There we go, check for square. That's good. Then we just have this final surface to tackle. As you can see, it's, it's not enough material to be able to saw it easily, so I'll use the scrub plane for that. So 
I'm working towards my line here. I don't want to go below the line. I just want to get very close to it and make sure I don't go below it on the other side as well. I'm going to swap over to the four plane again. So there we have it, four flat sides, square to each other, ready to mark out for a component in the joint chest. When I'm working with a board like this, the idea would be to check for wind in it visually, and you can see it's a little bit in wind. Take down the high spots, get this one side flat, relatively smooth. Clean the edges off so we can mark for a thickness all the way around flip it over and then bring that down. Sometimes you find it might be necessary on complex grain to use a toothed iron. This produces wire wool like shavings, planing with the grain and uh, smaller chips when planed across the grain. And it's very clear to see by the striations it leaves in the work what areas the plane has touched and those areas that are still a little bit low. Once the troughs that the grooving plane leaves uh, reach all the points over the board and it's nice and flat, uh, we can either then go on to smooth this face or we can use it as a reference to, to thickness round for the opposite face. Given that the grain was being quite difficult and giving us some tear out, instead of going to a standard bench plane, I'm using the low angle again but fitting it with a, a steep bevel on the bevel up iron. This will give it an effective planing angle of about 70 degrees. That's nice and flat, pretty smooth. We can continue with working on that in the project and uh, when we're ready use a smoother just to finish it off.
that's thickness dip to its uh, pretty much its maximum thickness. We've still got a little area here uh, where this panel would have a rebate all the way around the outside, so we'll lose some of that, and we could just smooth that off, sand it, or scrape it so it, uh, there are no sharp edges on there. The same with this little area here. We could use a gouge just to smooth that out and take any sharp edges off with some sandpaper. So I hope you found that informative. If you like the video, please share it. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, click that bell notification so you see the next video when it comes along. Cheerio.